And Marky, from your perspective, what, I mean, certainly given your profession, you would have, I'm sure you would have a very um, specific viewpoint on this, but what have you seen up until now? What have you seen in New Zealand personally and around you? And what do you think, in, I mean, should this get up in October now, um, what positive benefits will that have to your community? Oh, well, obviously it will have a huge um, impact on us because we won't be incarcerated. Um, but saying this, you know, um, if we get the yes vote, it's not going to be legal straight away. It'll be the next election before they pull that card out and say, right, we've got the policy all sorted now. Because at the moment, it's only a draft policy. Um, and they'll use that... Uh, cannabis vote to get themselves back into Parliament um, and that's okay as long as it gets there um, it just means another election um, as far as the numbers are concerned since Prohibition here in New Zealand there's been just under half a million people sent to jail for cannabis use or supply um, in the referendum draft policy they're um, saying that if you get um, court selling to underage people, um, excess amount on you at one time, you are going to go to court. You will be charged with some sort of cultivation and supply, particularly if you haven't got a licence. So this is where it's going to be very um, complicated with all the licensing that's going on, who is and who isn't, who can, who can't. Obviously, if you have got a commission in cannabis, then you, you're out there's no, no chance of you at the moment of um, even getting a licence, even for hemp. Um, which I think that sh uh, that's what I'm campaigning on this year, is that we should have expungement of convictions, and part of that should be we should get a hemp licence and compensation if we're going to legalise. And the reason why we're legalising is so the corporates can have a piece of the pie. If it was decriminalised, I don't think the corporates would have anything to do with it. Right, thank you. Can I just say, um, Stephanie, that I think it's very important when we're talking about cannabis law reform that um, an essential part of the component of that has to be, in my view, that people with uh, previous convictions uh, have those convictions expunged. Greg might like to say I'm more not. about that, but uh, I think that's absolutely essential. Absolutely. And like Marky said, if we can get that through in New Zealand, that would be amazing. Maybe, you know, I just look to New Zealand and go, well, God, gosh, if they can do it, Australia can do it. We can do it too. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, just on Alex's point, it's absolutely right. Um, you know, uh, the number of young people who get caught, you know, with a joint um, and then get charged and goes on the record and then you've got to explain it if anywhere you go, including in the paranoid United States, um, there has to be expung an expunging. Uh, in fact, I I'd go further. I, I would, um, I think that um, after a 10 year period, uh, all possession and use charges should be expunged. Um, look, these are, th th these are lifestyle choices these are health issues. They have no place on a person's interaction with the